Hello and welcome to the 2402 lecture on chapter 20, the lymphatic system. I've put uh, a number of a number of the terms in uh, highlighting here. Now it's not all of them, but just you know you have to know everything in these powerpoints. But I'm just kind of highlighting certain things. It gets a little bit less frequent from here on out. But here we go. There's two parts. There's what they call strictly the lymphatic system, and then what they call lymphoid organs and tissues. They work together. Uh, the lymphatic system is really transport and uh, cleaning, and then the lymphoid organs and tissues contribute to the cleaning uh, process and have their own jobs as well, as we'll see. So let's talk about these the lymphatic system sensu strictu uh, vessels. These are just any tubes, and they start small here with capillaries. So you'll notice that in this picture over here on the right and on the next page, you'll see uh, that the lymphatic capillaries are intricately involved with the cardiovascular capillaries because that's where they pick up their interstitial fluid. If you remember in the blood vessel chapter, I talked about bulk flow and how liquid would leak out of those uh, blood, vessel, uh, at the, blood vessels at the capillary beds, becoming interstitial fluid and then uh, finding its way back into the lymphatic system, where as you'll see, it gets dumped ultimately back into your cardiovascular system. So let's follow it. Capillaries are the little ones. They just have one layer of endothelial cells that are made of simple squamous epithelium, much like the blood vessel capillaries. There's these little valves, which they've conveniently called mini valves to let the stuff in. It doesn't let it out. And then there's a special group of these lymphatic capillaries called lacteals, which we'll find in the uh, small intestine. And we'll talk about again when we get to the digestive system. As those vessels, as those capillaries combine, they, they combine into what are called collecting vessels, which ultimately have all three tunics, very small and very thin. They're not even as thick as uh, veins tunics. So they need a lot of help moving it, moving the lymph as we'll see. As they get bigger, they become trunks and the trunks have names. They're supposed to be a bit of a highlight on that S, but uh, okay. Uh, there are uh, many trunks, but we're not going to name them. Uh, once they form together, they become what are called ducts. And there's a right lymphatic duct, which is rather limited. It only takes uh, lymph from your right arm and the right side of your head and thorax. And then the what's called the thoracic duct, which is a big duct, runs right down the middle and uh, collects from the rest of the body, left arm, and uh, left side of the head. Kind of a weird setup. Here's a close-up of the of a lymphatic capillary. You can see a little valve lets stuff in. Uh, here's the capillary bed and lymphatic capillaries intertwined. And here goes kind of a sequence all the way up through the body in sort of a diagrammatic way. Here it is again. That's that same image from the first page. And you can see these named ducts here. Uh, here's these lymphatic vessels. There's lymph nodes, which I'll talk about in a minute. Thoracic ducts right up the middle here. See this thing called the cisterna chile? That is a little reservoir type thing at the very base of that thoracic duct. And then up here at the top, you'll see the right lymphatic duct dumping in there and the left lymphatic duct dumping in, sorry, the, the thoracic duct dumping in there. I'm gonna say they just dump back into the subclavian veins, but they really kind of dump in at the junction between the subclavian veins and the uh, jugulars. We'll just say subclavian for simplicity. How does it move? Well, uh, the vessels themselves have a little bit of smooth muscle, but you're going to rely heavily on nearby arteries, and they're much um, more substantial contractions causing bulges. And when that bulges, it kind of squishes the lymph. Lymph have lymph ha uh, lymphatic vessels have valves also, like veins. And then we see these three uh, other mechanisms here: the muscular pump. So if you contract muscles, it'll squish it. Respiratory pump, same thing expanding your chest and depressing your abdomen uh, and then just general movement so the more you get up and move the more that lymph is going to move this is why you don't want to sit real still for a real long period of time over and over again because it'll cause that fluid to deposit in your lower limbs uh, this is kind of a lymphatic system summary and i'll call this screencast number one <laughs>